Hello there, kia ora. Have you ever had to deal with a child who's got a great big homework assignment that's due tomorrow that they've just told you about the night before and when you ask them why and try and get to the bottom of why you weren't told, you get all these kind of evasive answers where, you know, I lost the homework and I forgot about it and the teacher didn't remind You know, those kind of evasive answers that don't really go anywhere and kind of pass off all blame to other people. Well, that's exactly what the interview was like with Q&A Jack Tame up against Simeon Brown over the last couple of days. Now, Simeon was being interviewed as both the Transport Minister and the Minister for Local Government. The interview was actually split up into two 15-minute segments, the second half relying or focusing on three waters and water infrastructure. The first on transport. 20% of that first interview was Jack Tame asking the same questions over and over to get a straight answer out of the minister. And he got straight answers when it didn't involve academic and scientific research into the problems that they've got or verified data into the problems that they've caused. So when he says, did you campaign on this? The answer was a straight no. We didn't campaign on increasing things like registration fees. But when he asked a question about what the research said around blanket uh, speed limit changes around schools, my God, that was hard to watch. What is the potential downside to changing speed limits outside schools? So what are the potential downsides to having variable speed limits outside schools? Oh, there's zero downsides whatsoever. I think As Transport Minister, you think there are zero downsides to having variable speed limits outside schools? So, so that, okay, so my so, question is, is there a downside to having variable speed limits outside schools as opposed to a blanket approach? One of the issues there is if you go is, to some of those... Is there stubborn... a downside? Is there a potential downside to having variable speed limits outside well, schools? The issue you... What sort of productivity gains are you getting from introducing those variable speed limits, specifically outside of schools? Uh, my question is, what, what Entire state highways gains? Yeah, I get it. network so, down to 80 kilometres per hour. What is there your, is what increased the travel times from... Minister, Auckland Transport tested how much time was lost for journeys in urban areas with lower speed limits outside schools. Have you seen that research? Yes, yeah, so there's been a range so, of so, estimates. So what did Auckland, tra what what Auckland Transport be? find for, for, this, for the changes outside schools? So they started over 20 minutes for 20 minute average journeys. How much time was saved by having the highest speed limits outside schools? So, so what, uh, what did Auckland Transport find? And that was just the first question. On the second question, which was around budget blowouts and the estimates for the costs for things like roads of national significance that they want to restart, how much the estimate was that the National Party bought to the election versus what Waka Kotahi had actually told them it was going to be. And it should have been a fairly simple answer. While Simeon Brown said it was about $6 billion, the actual answer is $16 billion. There's a $10 billion difference there. But trying to get to that answer... Oh my God, it was painful. When you were here during the election campaign, I asked you about the accuracy of your transport costings and I asked repeatedly if you'd accounted for inflation. And you brushed aside those concerns at the time. You said you'd taken an economically prudent approach to costings with the information you had available. So when NZTA costed your projects in November, did they find that your party's costings were accurate? Of what those what do they find? We, about but when costing? we took the so, infrastructure, sorry, we spoke not my, about that's this. That's not my question. And we spoke about this last time here, here. as well. We so, need so, to look so, at a whole. My things. question was. Despite all of the concerns that were raised during the election campaign and the scrutiny that was put over your costings and the questions about properly accounting for inflation, when NZTA costed your projects, did they find your costings were accurate? Of what and those did they costings find, would be? And, and did they find that your costings were accurate? Projects. And so but did, what I, did but their range find that your range, because you also put well, forward a range, did they find that your well, range was well, accurate? Well, no, this is really important. No, I, you, no this is very important. I understand what you're trying to do. I understand well, what you're trying to do. I've got I, a question here. So, so there was a lot of scrutiny on those costings. A lot of people said you haven't properly accounted for inflation, the consenting issues that you have raised. Uh, you said, no, we're the party of fiscal discipline, we're the party of, uh, party of economic prudence. We've got this right. So if you just take the average range from NZTA's costings versus the ones you took to the election, how inaccurate were you? Very clear, so, though. So what, what was, the, what was well, the average? Well, how, how, how inaccurate, well, sorry, how inaccurate were you no, I'm not, by the average? Well, I'll put it this way. We so, get again, done. so again, I'm just going to go back to that question. Using the average cost, the average forecasting that NZTA applied compared to your costings, how many billions of dollars short were you? Minister, 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 that's not I, a question. I, so, um, the I, question I, I, is... We've been very open about that. We've okay, been very so, but, open but about please, that. here's an opportunity to be open. How many billions of dollars short were you by your costings in the election campaign, taking the average? You're not being open projects, and accurate. Sorry, Minister. And we're going to go... Committed to delivering... How many billions of dollars short were you? How many billions well, I, short? I, I mean, to be honest, I thought this delivery. How many, on how many billions of dollars short were you? And we're focused on getting things done how as a government. How many billions of dollars short? It's becoming really apparent that with this particular government, facts, data and information 
they're not what they're using to change rules and to guide the decision making process. They're going very much by what we think and feel. And that's kind of a bad thing because while feelings are certainly important, they shouldn't be the kind of thing that's going to tell us how we deliver major infrastructure projects or what the long term effects are going to be to rule changes that could end up in more people, particularly children being seriously hurt or worse. <sighs> But there's not much that we can do except push back on it. When you see an MP being so evasive when it comes to answers, push back on it. Let people know how frustrating it is because not getting a straight answer out of a politician is almost considered normal these days. But not getting a straight answer out of a politician who tells you that they know better like the National Party seems to be doing here, that's just condescending. <laughs>